Hello, very glad you could join us. Gender equality and women empowerment are still subjects of concern in 2021, 21 years after the adoption of the UN Security Council Resolution 1325 in 2000 on women, peace and security. A landmark resolution that recognizes the immense contributions of women to global peace and security as well as the vital role in conflict prevention, peacekeeping, conflict resolution, and peace building. The UN, the AU, and other relevant bodies have been working to ensure women's priorities are central to peace and security decisions at all levels. Now, while some good has been done, violent conflicts continue to disproportionately affect women and girls and intensify pre-existing gender inequalities and discrimination. Our conversation today seeks to keep thoughts stead as we review the barriers that limit women's full participation in achieving and sustaining peace and more ways we can address it. My guest today is Omolara Balogu. She leads policy influencing and advocacy at West Africa Civil Society Institute she is an international development practitioner, civil society specialist, and advocacy strategist with over 15 years of experience in strengthening the civil society ecosystem in sub-Saharan Africa. She is on the board of many local and international organizations, including Redefine African Foundation. Thank you very much for being with us today, Omalara. Thank you so much for listening. You've had quite a bit of experience in this um, area. In your candid opinion, where are we in Africa when we talk about gender equality? Thank you so much. Um, I think uh, gender equality is still a very important conversation that we need to continue to have because of the way or the slow pace in which we are making progress. Yes, certainly progress. We've made several progresses, you know, uh, with our legislation. We have tried to create opportunities for women to have access to uh, um, resources and control them. Uh, we have also uh, tried to create opportunity for women to have access to uh, political positions as well as decision making, leadership, and, and many others. But going back to your question, how are we faring? The pace is pretty slow. It will interest you to note that uh, one of the recent um, uh, uh, data that the World Economic Forum chunked out, I think last year, says that, uh, and, and it says that Africa, it's going to take Africa 95 years to close gender gaps. Mm. Uh, South Africa, about 75 years. That is to tell you that we have a very long way to go. And I mean, this is not far-fetched from the fact that there are so many structural and systemic uh, imbalances on which this disintegration thrives on. We have situations where patriarchy is still you know, controlling most of the things that we run across the continent, right from our political spaces, the economic spheres, the social and cultural life. Uh, it's been tagged an African thing because we don't see much of that in the Western world. Uh, but there's been a lot of effort from women themselves, from some policy policy leaders, the political elites, uh, political leaders. There have been a lot of effort from uh, international institutions, the United Nations, African Union, ECOWAS, and uh, most of the uh, legislations and instruments that have been chunked out for over 50 years. Most of them, you know, uh, uh, does recognize the need for us to expand consciously. I mean, being deliberate about it to be deliberate about creating that, you know, space for women to be part of this processes. All right, let, let, me, let, me, let me jump in there. There's something you said about the many resolutions that we've had. 
I want to, I want to, we, we, we have the resolution 1325, and then after that we'd have, we've had about nine more. Is it a problem of implementation, or is it a problem of people not being aware? Why does the issue of gender inequality and discrimination continue mm -hmm. in spite of all these resolutions? Well, it will interest you to know that uh, it's a combination of many factors, uh, some of which you already you already mentioned. Um, we have had instances where uh, resolutions at the United Nations or chartered of the African Union or even protocols of ECOWAS all speaking to gender equality and women's empowerment have not found you know, good or positive reception at the country level due to the way and how our uh, political systems and, 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 and legal systems operate. When countries attend most of these meetings and they uh, uh, concede, you know, agreed to whatever decision is made at the level of, you know, this very high level meetings, when they come back to their respective countries, they are to ensure that these processes, you know, go through their uh, parliamentary processes, the legal procedures, and ensure it can be, you know, enshrined into local laws to facilitate implementation or domestication, as we call it. And and then you realize that this is where most of the bottlenecks, you know, play play out. Uh, you have instances where existing structures, legal structures, or other government programs at the national level does not, you know, create room for such to be implemented. And uh, for example, when we talk about CEDAW Convention against all forms of di discrimination against women, we have had instances where um, it's said in that particular instrument that no uh, woman should be discriminated against regardless of where and how. But we see this playing out because countries find this find it difficult to implement or domesticate this international instrument either due to lack of resources lack of systems you know suitable systems or uh, adequate uh, structures to 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 support the implementation and most importantly is usually lack of political will most of our leaders are very quick to endorse instruments, very quick to agree to, you know, the, the, the loudest voice in the room when they're in the UN. But having that political will to go back to their countries and implement and follow them through and ensure that what they have assigned onto, they create the enabling environment to walk to talk in their countries has always been uh, a problem. And this is this is also supported usually by the way and manner that women are generally saying, especially in our contest here in Africa. An average okay. person would tell you, you know, a woman is supposed to be in the house. Why are you wasting a lot of money to send a woman to university? She's going to end up in her husband's kitchen. Do we still so have that kind of thinking. I don't think that kind of thinking is still prevalent, is it? Absolutely, it does. I mean, we are trying, you are trying, others are trying, but we still have a long way, way to, go. to go. That thinking does, even in this very 2021 you see parents, uh, maybe not the, you know, the elites like, like you and I or the middle class who can easily differentiate between our, our left and right and, and, and all those things. But when you go into the villages where we really need to see these changes, where cultural and social uh, uh, patriarchy is really holding down the culture and social practices, you will see that this thing still happens. We have across West Africa, where I'm very familiar with, where you go to some of the, uh, um, I had opportunity to do some work in, in the Sahel region of West Africa, you know, Niger, Mali, it's not that part of Nigeria. It's not an exclusion. We have instances where religion, especially, continues to drive that kind of thinking. So yes, it's still it, such thinking still exists. And we have also had situations whereby, when you're talking about women's participation in politics, for example, we have said so many things. We've given so many recommendations. We've talked about using the quota None system. Is We've talked used. to political parties okay. to use their strongholds. Yeah. Okay, you hear me? Yes, I can actually. I'm, yes. I'm, I'm trying. I was trying to, 
you know, get, yeah, I will get to, back to you when you talk about uh, political will to follow, will to follow through. Basically, I want us to explore that in the course of this conversation. But first, there are other aspects. We have the women empowerment as well as th th those are the two pillars we are looking at this evening. Um, what is the connection? between gender equality and women's empowerment. If you can just tell us that briefly. Excellent. When we are talking about gender equality, we are talking about creating systems, structures, environments that present equal opportunities to both male and female. And you will agree with me that for many years, this has not been the case for the very reasons that I was talking uh, the, the previous point I, I, I shared I shared earlier. We have had instances where majority of women, especially a, a couple of decades back, it's changing now, but I mean, these, these are some of the outcomes, had uneven access to education, either due to family decisions, not to spend so much money in educating a girl child because it's going to end up in the kitchen, or just, you know, continue to play that place uh, priorities on the boy child as the society, you know, uh, kind of uh, uh, um, uh, believes. We've also had instances of unequal access to jobs, uh, not until very recently, been two, uh, two, three decades ago, even in some countries till date, women do not have uh, the opportunity to end the same thing as their male counterpart, even though they hold the same position. So uh, that's another one. Of course, um, inadequate access to resources, resource controls. I mean, you are in Nigeria. You also agree with me that in some culture today, in Nigeria, women do not have rights to own land, regardless yes. of who who uh, you know uh, bequeathed it to them or whatever. They don't have access to own land. It's culturally impossible for women to say, this is my land, and, and that, that's another one. We also have a system that have prioritized men over women. Look for uh, our legal legal institutions, for example, our legal systems. We continue to read, you know, troubling uh, uh, stories about gender-based uh, violence, you, sexual you, violence. You've actually highlighted cases. a whole lot of the barriers and issues that we have when it comes to you know, promoting gender equality and women empowerment. I want us to explore, the, you are a civil society uh, specialist and you also do advocacy as well. What are we missing in the push for gender equality and women empowerment? But hold that thought. We'll go on a short break and when we come back, our guests will take on that question. Good to know you're still with us. I still have my guest, Amalara Balogun, with us. So before that break, I put a question to you about what we're missing when it comes to the push for gender equality and women empowerment. Thank you so much. Um, we are missing a lot. And uh, the first point that I'm going to raise here is the low level of empowerment that we give to women. It is one thing to talk about giving women the space. It's another thing to ensure that these women have the capacity, you know, to take on those spaces and make their voices heard and make significant contributions to whatever conversations going on, be it political conversations, economic conversations, social cultural conversations, or, you know, even this current pandemic conversation. Where are the women? If you don't give them the, the, the capacity to, 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 you know, make meaningful contributions, people will not find, you know, their, their presence worthwhile. And this is where civil society, for example, the organization I work for, has done a lot of work 
we try as much as possible to provide capacity buildings to civil society organizations, you know, strengthening the organization, both the operational and institutional. And of course, connecting this women, uh, 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 the, the grassroots women with those who have, you know, pretty much uh, uh, elitist, you know, exposed for them to kind of share knowledge and, and bring them up to certain standards. We've done uh, uh, a lot of programs around this area uh, in the Sahel, like I mentioned, creating yeah. opportunities for all women. That's another thing that we are missing. We are not creating enough. And it's, it's, it's not far-fetched from decisions that you and I, society, government... Okay, let, 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 me, let me interject taken. here again. There is a school of thought that debates the fact that women... We shouldn't have this sense of entitlement to things. We, if we want something, we should take it because nothing is given to anyone. So when you talk about, you know, creating, recreating these things, is it the women or is it a, a collective effort? Well, um, taking it, taking something that you want, yes, I, I believe in that, in that school of thought as an advocate, but very little successes I usually make when the environment is not enabled. There are so many things you want changed in Nigeria, for example. There are so many things I want changed in West Africa, in Africa, you know, globally. But if the environment is not enabled, when we're talking about environment for conversations like this, we're talking about the structures, the systems, the laws, how enabling a day to facilitate whatever we are thinking, whatever we desire. These are important questions we need to ask ourselves. Is the environment enabled? Go to the political parties, for example. Let's let's talk about polit women's political empowerment. Okay, I'm, I'm, I, I have to interject to in the interest of time. I have to. There's so much to talk about, and uh, we'll barely scratch the surface. To be honest, um, I, I want you to speak quickly. Uh, there is this talk about the immense contribution of women to global peace and security. It said they, they play a vital role in conflict prevention, peacekeeping, conflict resolution, and all of that. How is this reflective of empowerment? Is it that women are not empowered enough to play this role, or we're not stepping up to the plate? Well, when we're talking about women, peace, and security, like you and I rightly said earlier, um, a lot has been done. And uh, I think it's going to be ridiculous for anyone to say that women lack the you know, capacity to play uh, this role uh, effectively and efficiently. We all know, regardless of education, uh, educational background or professional sphere, an average woman is a peacemaker. Even in the house, between kids, between siblings, they will most likely send you to go and, you know, set to scuffle between your brothers and sisters as a woman rather than send a guy. I mean, culturally. So it's in it for us to, 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 to breed peace, to, 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 to uh, ensure that the environment where we are is peaceful. And uh, if you are familiar with some of the conflicts that Africa has, has, has seen, indeed, Africa has uh, had a fair share of brutal conflicts uh, from intra to interstate to civil war, uh, all kind of conflicts, violent extremism, just, just name them. And uh, uh, you remember in Liberia, for example, the 14 year civil war in Liberia was brought to art through the actions of Liberian women. This was a conflict that lasted for 14 good years and the international communities, uh, ECOWAS uh, as the, so the sub-regional organization, and different partners could not put an end to it until women, women, very local women, in, in, a, in, in a platform called WITNET, Women in Peace Movement of Jerabout, they brought you know, that conflict to a odd. And it, you, you, you know the result, Chastillo was eventually asked to leave the country. This is where, and this is a clear example of the role that women have played in conflict. And okay. when you go, and this is not to, you know, uh, 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 negate the fact that women are usually mostly affected when conflict happens. When you go okay. to the to the IDP camps and refugees, just, you can, I mean, go and put it is, it is, it is, it is clear um, in certain areas that women do have a huge role to play, and they are playing it when it comes to uh, security. I, I want to ask you this question quickly in the time that we have. In 2016, 
uh, more than 19 AU member states adopted res that resolution 1325 we talked about earlier. In 2018, the AU adopted the regional strategy for gender equality and women empowerment. Yeah. I want to ask you that what are some of the strategy groups like yours and others are using to push for gov more government commitment in the fight to uh, ensure gender equality and women empowerment? It takes us back to the um, political will you talked about earlier. How are you groups like yours pushing? Well, um, I, I, like, like I said earlier, it is one thing for you to endorse some of these ideas when they come to the fore at the level of at the international arena. It's another thing for you to have the will, to have the resources, to have the structures, to have like-minded like -minded people you're working with at the country level who can help to actualize uh, uh, these dreams. Uh, for civil society, we have done quite a lot. For example, uh, we have an organization called West African Network for Peace Building, WANEP. WANEP has done tremendous work in ensuring that um, not only 1325, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, all those resolutions, African Union Charter, the uh, uh, 2063 AU Agenda, ECOWAS Vision 2020, now going to Vision 2050, and even the Global uh, Development Agenda, uh, Agenda 2030, the SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals as we have it go fight specifically state how civil society you know how people are participating in ensuring that gender equality is something that we can realize before 2030 but i i, 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 I certainly that. hope that we will realize it in time really um i'm afraid that's where we'll have to stop today thank you very much omolara ah. balogu head policy influencing and advocacy at west africa civil society institute Thank you so much. We'll be coming back to you for more. Thank you for having me. It's our pleasure. Indeed, conversations like this are important. As with other key issues, we will continue to bring guests whose experiences on the field can add clearer perspective and suggest innovative ways we can continue to address gender inequality and women empowerment. For now, on behalf of the production team, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week.